Hello everybody, welcome to Season 3 of my Wally series, Rogue Robot Reviews. Yeah, in case you weren't aware, this was Season 1 of the series, this was Season 2, and now we're on Season 3. Anything else from beforehand, we don't really count. And for good reason. Because, like we did with last season, we're starting things off with a remake of an old episode, coincidentally the second episode I did. Yeah, I'm pretty much redoing all of my oldest reviews in chronological order, Maybe I'll do one a year from now on. And as you might have guessed, that means we're talking about the robot known as 75. Now admittedly, the original video I did on 75 was better than the ones on 4867, both because it was actually done in one video, and because it was the first time the series ever saw editing. That being said, it was still very narrow in scope, just me rambling unscripted with a couple of images flashing on screen while Dud Throttleman stares into your soul. I also believe I did 75 so early on because he was a simple, easy to explain character, making the transition to the new review format more smooth, and to sort of get him out of the way before moving on to the cooler stuff. And while I don't find today's character to be anything really worth screaming about, he's no maroon robot or anything for me, he's still, just like all the rest, more than deserves a review that's up to my current standards of quality. Which means we get to do it all again! So without further ado, this is my remastered take on 75. 75 is one of many of By and Large's robots that are members of the maintenance class on the Axiom. Based off of what little info we have about them, they're seemingly made more so for performing work in the industrial regions of the ship, rather than directly serving the passengers up top. It's unknown what their exact job is supposed to be, but when considering the fact that other robots who have claws that are very similar to his own are occasionally seen transporting these little cylinders, I'd guess that this is what 75 was also made to do. And now, let's move on to his design, shall we? 75 has a light gray head, with a face that clearly reuses the same facial structure of that of Hans the Massage Robot, making him one of what I have dubbed as the Hans lookalikes. You know what they say, if you're gonna copy anybody, you might as well copy the coolest. This means that he has a light gray, circular vent piece in place of where the eyes likely should be, and a strange lit up light green piece underneath, somewhat resembling a smiling mouth. This of course raises the very obvious question of, how exactly do they, or any of the hands look likes for that matter, manage to see where they're going without having any eyes? Now, I used to assume that these gray pieces here served that sort of purpose, but they seem to be made more so for sound or ventilation. But then what about this little light here? That could be used to see, perhaps. Especially since in the trailers, it was originally shown to be blue before getting changed, much like how some of the other robots' eyes were originally shown to be blue in the marketing. But then comes the issue of some hands lookalikes not exhibiting that kind of detail in that spot. So in conclusion, I have to believe that this little red light here is used for him to see. But hey, that's just a theory. No, I'm not making a joke there, it's a little too soon to do so. Moving on though. Printed onto the right side of his head is a barcode, a large 7575, and a smaller, hard to read, three digit number that I currently can't identify. And because of that, I've always had to refer to this guy as just 75 until I can figure out what this says, since I believe the three digit number on his body is actually meant to be his unit code, his individual model number, or the closest we have to a name for him. But 75 will have to do for now. On his back is a dark vent with greenish vertical slits on it, and on the underside is the base piece for his arms, the joints of which are the same as what we've come to expect from this series. The same typical shoulder pieces, extensions, elbow joints, hinge joints, panels that can slide along the side of the big gray forearms, etc. This guy's forearms also have some noticeable creases and vents on them, a pair of panels underneath, plus these thin little handlebars on the outer sides. Nice little detailing there, Pixar. And of course, that leads us to his prominent gray claws, which are shaped just like those of the blue grabber robots, among others, complete with their black grippers and rotating wrists, which will definitely be much more relevant to us later on. Trust me, you'll see. <laughs> 
Now, if you look really closely, you'll notice that 75's paint has many smear marks on it, along with bits of withering around the edges. This is clearly a byproduct of operating for 700 years on a ship, holy crap. And just adds a further dimension of believability and realism to his design. Just great detailing all around. So as you can tell, there isn't too much to say about 75's design, it is exclusively unique to him in particular, as most of his body is just comprised of bits and pieces of other characters, but I still really like it. As is the case with all the hands lookalikes, the different facial aesthetic makes him stand out and forces him to rely on body language to express himself. The darker grey coloring with scratches and prominent claws as well makes him look rather gritty and strong, and I just think that's cool. Also, FYI, out of all the hands lookalikes out there, the robot who most closely resembles 75 would either be this commonly seen darker grey model that permanently has a pair of canisters connected to his arms in the same vein as 4639. Dude looks like an exhausted husband carrying luggage at the airport. Or this rare model with a white face piece usually seen carrying that blue cylinder I was talking about, which I always humorously thought looked like a rolling pin as a kid. But despite that, you'd be surprised to see just how few times the 75 model actually appears in the movie. The first is seen passing by Wally when he's stepping out of the elevator for the first time, and right after, another gets caught up in the robot pileup caused by our main character. A couple of them are found stopping at the intersection to stare up at the caution displays and point towards Wally and Eve. And lastly, a few of them are seen at the end exploring their new home of Earth. Most prominently this guy, who is facing towards the humans who are watering the plant. There's probably a couple of others hidden throughout that I missed, but those were all that I could find. With the exception of, obviously, the Rogue Robot. Oh yeah! Marked with a red boot and kept in section 5A of the repair ward, all the way down the hall with the long-necked robot, 947 and 753, huh, funny how these two have such similar names, the Reject 75 has a rather humorous and exclusive condition. You see, he's usually found rapidly and violently rotating his claws, as if they were a pair of electronic mixers that have gone out of control. This is what I was alluding to earlier about his hands, and it's genuinely a really funny background gag that I've always enjoyed. It's kind of metal too, like, this dude has straight up blenders for hands. He can be seen for the first time when entering the repair ward, with his shoulder sticking out from behind a wall, but on the complete other side of the room from where he should be. Yay, continuity errors, my favorite! When Wally is placed into his spot, he can be found in the very blurry background, and then when Wally looks around the room, you can see 75 frantically spinning those claws like there is no tomorrow. And again, from Wally's vision, only now twirling one of his claws. After this, he watches Wally charge towards the diagnostics room, and as you might have noticed, this car stick right here has just released its grasp on him. As if off-screen, 75 just tried to escape from his spot, only for him to get put back in place by the overseeing arm. Following him watching Eve's blaster ray travel across the repair ward, where it seems he's managed to regain control over his arms, he is then set free and finally escapes from his pen, though as painfully apparent as as it may be, the animators had shown him and his friends escaping from the wrong side of the room. Ugh. But on a happier note, 75 turns his attention towards Wally through the hole in the wall, and then excitedly proceeds to smash his way into the room, using his claws like drills to break through the glass, shoving Eve out of the way and helping to pick Wally up. Notice how his face here is clipping into 947's head, by the way. Oopsies! Anyways, he turns back around out of the room, and while at the back end of the crowd, he observes his new master of Wally before making an effort to leave the repair ward, swiftly dashing out the doors alongside 4639. Now running free and rampant with the rest of his chums, 75 turns at the hallway intersection, still at the back of the group, now with Birdie and the winged robot, joyfully celebrating with his arms twirling up in the air before his fun is put to a halt by the Stuart bots. At this point, he just sits on the right side of the group behind 3142, with his arms held out in this awkward position like, I don't know what to do! 
He then proceeds to get his picture taken and continues to look upon the lineup of security blocking his path, but once Wally and Eve fly off, he quickly jolts past the stewards, swerving from his left, then to his right, and then finally leaving the scene by turning to his left again. And he never returns after this because, of course he doesn't. But I'll be honest, despite his hilarious and rambunctious quirk, out of all the background rejects who never return following this scene, he's among the ones I'm the least hurt by the departure of. This isn't 75's fault necessarily, it's just that when there's so many intriguing robots worthy of discussion and more appearances, some of them will eventually wind up melding into the background more often. And 75 is just an example of that, though I think it would have been awesome to see him try to use those arms as weapons of mass destruction, maybe to try to tear through a Stuart or something, if they were strong enough, but oh well. But don't worry, as we are not done with 75 just quite yet. Much like with 4867 before him, 75 wasn't featured in that much content outside of the movie, but their little bundle of minor appearances are still worth the acknowledgement. Their full body image was only used on the Mega Chart in the RoboKit video. Meanwhile, in that previous shot of the robots running down the hallway that I talk about all the time, you can see a bit more of him now fully in white with his hands still up in the air. And speaking of a fully white 75, the last place where you can find not just one of him, but many of them, is in the Wally -E PS2 game where tons of robots who bear a striking resemblance to him act as obstacles by traveling up and down their designated paths in a minigame akin to that of Crossy Road. And if you still don't think that was enough to pay respect to 75, Wild Art has come to the rescue with what was their first ever public drawing of a Wally -E robot, which just so happened to be of 75. And that, my pips and peeps, was 75. Now, despite not offering as much to talk about as some of the other characters we've done so far, 75 is still a robot that I can really get behind, especially with those blender hands and that weird smile of a total creepazoid. <laughs> Open up, Rai Rai! We have chocolate! I've definitely grown to like him more ever since my old video on him, and to me at least, he's not just some stock standard, average, redundant, interchangeable, nothing background character who only gets covered out of sheer obligation. No, 75 is a robot deserving of some level of respect and attention devoted to them. A worthy member of the Rogue Robot Club, and I'm once again proud to have fixed another one of my past mistakes. It was kind of inevitable to do so anyways. I suppose you could say it was... Oh, and also, on a side note, we finally did it, guys! At long last, the Maroon Robot has been given his long-awaited character page on the Pixar Wiki. Balance has officially been restored to the universe. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.